So this is my small dilutions journal, and this is a mop-up page. So I, this is where I've just smeared on paint um, that I've had on brushes and that kind of stuff, and just left it to dry. And I have one or two other pages like this in the journal. Now I'm looking at this background here and thinking, I quite like the way that there's white and tones of blue just fading into the background, but mostly it's grey. And I have this um, old vintage image in my stash that I thought would work really, really well with this kind of page. And this is the image. Now I have already cut around out with a pair of scissors. I'm not gone um, too careful because I can always blend her into the page. But I just thought she was absolutely beautiful. And I love that top hat. I love the fact she's all dressed in riding gear. Um, and these colours, the grey, works really, really well with that black and white image. But having said that, um, there are lots of other colours that work really well with grey. Yellow being one of them. And so is orange. So I'm going to try and do an art journal page today with those colours, with the grey, predominantly with the orange, um, the spiced marmalade, and the fossilised amber in the background, but I want to try and use the properties of the distress ink, which means that they're non-permanent, with some stencils. So I'm going to use the Harlequin stencil my, from TCW. This is uh, my disgustingly grungy Harlequin stencil that I've not really looked after. And I also want to use my um, Celtic Knot. So this is one of my design stencils. So I'm also going to use this in the background too. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to um, create a kind of blended background with these two colours. So I'm going to start with two fresh ink pads. Well, sort of fresh. It's a little bit dirty, but that doesn't really make any difference. So I'm going to begin just by blending some of these colours he says it's got dropsy today, I think. And if I can find one of my page protectors, I'll just drop that underneath there so I can start bringing the page or the ink in and just blending it in from the edge. Now obviously this is a water-based one, so it will react with any water-based mediums and stuff that I put over the top which is fine. I know that before I start so I can plan accordingly with what I'm going to use for glues and the like. So that's maybe a little bit too dark up there so let's just blend that out again. Now by the way this ink is reacting to the paint this isn't gesso it's, it's feeling as though it's probably um, Acrylic. I couldn't think of the word then for a second. Titanium white, probably. So that's better. It's bigger. Because it's going on rather smoothly, so it doesn't feel like it's gesso. Okay, let's bring out that spiced marmalade. that much of a difference once you actually start blending between the two. Looks like there may be a big difference in them but when you actually start getting them on the page not that much of a difference really. I am still trying to keep some of that grey in the background. So I think I'm just going to give that a quick blast with the heat gun. Okay, so that's dry. So I'm just going to pop the distress inks to one side for the minute. And then I'm going to grab that Harlequin stencil. 
I'm going to lay it down over here. Now of course being water reactive if we get a baby wipe I say we that's the royal we and rub over It's going to remove some of that ink. So I just need to dry the stencil. I'm going to put it back down wet. It's still a bit wet. Better. And then do the same thing again over here. I'm just rub in very, very gently with the baby wipe. And that's removing some of that ink, like so. And obviously some of that water has gone underneath and created you know, a little bit of a mottling effect, which is fine. So let's just give that a blast and get it dry. Okay, now I've never tried doing the same technique with permanent archival ink and alcohol. Now I'm just wondering if anybody has tried that, please leave me a comment below this video to and tell me whether this kind of technique, this ghosting technique, works with um, permanent archival ink and alcohol. If it does, then I think I would prefer to use that method rather than um, water and um, the distress ink because the archival will be permanent again when dry. This, however, will always reactivate again with water. So let's grab my Celtic knot stencil. I'm going to go back this time with the spiced marmalade. And I'm going to go and add that ink through this stencil. like so. And then we'll add some more over here. The focal image is going to go over here, remember. Okay, again, let's give that a blast with the heat gun and get it dry. And then let's bring that focal image back in again. And position it just up against the page edge. There we go. Now what I can do is just move that out of the way, get that fossilised amber, the remnants on there, and just very, very lightly now start going around the edge and bring in some of that colour. And that will help to blend the focal image onto the page. It's just very subtly changing the colour on the edges. So she starts to blend in a little bit better and we can always add a little bit more of that yellow just there. How cool is she? Okay, so before we had her, 
I want to add some text into this. So I think I'm going to bring in um, a darker colour now. But I think I am going to try and use um, a permanent ink. So I'm going to grab my potting soil. And I think a script stamp. Now then, I did have another script stamp kicking around somewhere, but I think I've tidied it away. It's always the case. You tidy things away and you never find them again. Oh, it's there. Ta da! Okay. So let's see if we can. Try. I'm going to try and get it a little bit straight. As everybody knows, I have difficulty doing anything straight. So I'll get in there before somebody else does. So I want to add a little bit more with a stencil. So let's see what kind of texty stencils we've got. Don't particularly want to use art is because that's too scripty. So let me see what else we have in the collection. That's got writing on it. Don't want to do Christmas. Let's go past that one. I'm just flicking through my um, folder with all my stencils in. Um, that's numbers. Let's see. Don't have that many stencils with writing on by the looks of things. The Dina Wakely one there, but I think that might be a bit too boring yeah not boring in the sense of what it says but just the font is a bit too meh if you get my drift right let's try some mr holtz's let's see what we got there's eye chart possibly let's see countdown mm, numbers again not particularly bothered Chicago schoolhouse. There's the flourish. Ooh, flourish. No, I want. I want. I want writing. I don't want pattern. Cargo. Me liking the idea of cargo, or maybe eye chart. I like the idea of eye chart. Okay, so new foam for potting soil. Let's just whip that off. Load that up. And let's just lightly go over and bring that in. Just adding a little darkness into the background. Yeah. Me likey. A little bit more of that over here. Excuse the rattling. I have some little draw units that I've got handles on, that like drop handles. And they do tend to rattle a bit. Mm, I know I said I didn't want numbers, but what the hell. We're entitled to change our minds. If you can't change your own mind in your own art journal, what can you do? 
See, I don't actually mind the fact that this is quite dreary a background because we can lift it and we can lift it a bit later on. And dreary can sometimes be effective. Like that. Likey, likey, likey. Likey, Mikey. Okay, so let's bring our lady back in. And let's see how she's now sitting. Let's see. Like much. Okay, I'm going to glue her in now. So, because we've used um, water, I don't want to use. A glue stick or matte medium so I'm going to use this Tombow Mono Aqua glue that I recently purchased as a comparison with the Collal multi-purpose. I'm going to use her, I'm going to use the glue on her because it does give us some wiggle room just like the Collal. Collal, Collal. And we can drop her down. We've got time to lay it on. Not that bad if it goes a little bit over. And just give her a gentle rub down. She lovely. trying to think of a name for her. What do you think we ought to call her? Leave me a comment in the description as to what you think we should name this lady. Okay. I'm liking that. So now what I need to do is to find something, a little slogan, a little quote or phrase that we can just add to the page um, before we add our final touch. So I'm going to go and grab my um, Tim Holtz small talk and clipping stickers and I'm going to have a look through to see if there's anything appropriate we can use for this. Well that didn't too long to see a couple of phrases on these clipping stickers from Tim Holtz Ideology that I think are going to work really really well with this page. Now I like these ones because they also have that uh, neutral kind of coloured background. Um, so I've got here one that reads, let's see if I can hold this up to the camera so you can read it, thoughts that whisper to my heart, like that. So I'm going to put that one down here. And then directly underneath that, it says, always reminds me of her. And that's exactly where they were on the sheet. And I think those two work perfectly together. So I'm just going to put that one there. Now, okay. No, nope, those two will do. I'm looking and just thinking, oh, I wonder if there's any others. Right, while we've got that out, oh, I've still got some ink left on my foam with that fossilised amber. I'm just going to rub very gently. Just to add a little bit of colour to it, just to take off that starkness. Now, talking of starkness, here we go again. I'm going to add some splatters. I know everybody goes, oh, splatters again, but it works. And I'm trying to find my cloth. And I probably will need to clean my fan brush as well. So, yeah, it's absolutely gummed up. 
from the last time I used it. I haven't cleaned the water. So I'm just going to go and wash that quickly and I'll be right back. So I just need to clean off some of this distressing off my craft mat. We don't want that getting into the white paint. That'll do. I'm going to add splodge. A little bit of water and then mix the paint in. A little bit too thick. That will do. And then Yeah. Somebody should invent a splatter guard for crafters and arty peeps like us. Okay, now, because we've used water reactive inks, some of the ink will react to the paint. Now, can you see up here look where it's started to go yellow already, which is perfect. So that stark white splatters will start to die back a little bit and will start to blend in to the page. Down here, they'll stay white because this is on the white uh, or the black of the paper where we didn't put a lot of the ink but where we have got it it will start to tint not a lot but just enough for it to blend in nicely but give a little bit of a highlight to the page okay so that paint or the paint splatters as you can see have started to take on a little bit of that colour from the background as expected but what I want to do now is just to add a little bit more of that brown frame or that brown colour around the outside of the page so just to give it a little bit more of a, a finished frame around the pages. Just subtly dirtying up the edges. So while I'm doing that I can also just be discussing that I could have instead of used the stencils for the writing and the stamps I could have used book text um, and I could have used um, texture paste as well in the background but you, you don't always have to use all of the same elements every time on every page so some pages I like to use book text um, and things in the background sometimes I just want to have a layered coloured background rather than adding tissue and napkins and embossing paste and then you know doing the full works on it every time so sometimes you know it's nice just to have a little bit of a simple layered page as an alternative to always adding you know book text effects and that kind of stuff now the splatters are something which helps to bring a page together and helps to make a page more cohesive and I don't know why it's just something magical whether it's white splatters or black splatters or um, colour coordinating splatters that help to just pull a page together to make it um, 
one big cohesive project but for me you know I'm happy with the way that page looks so I'm now just going to date stamp so it's the 23rd today Sunday if I can find which way around we're going two four that's a three and that's a two so just make sure I've got that right do it on the date on my mat 23rd of July and I'm going to stamp her just there so that's my date stamp and then using a Pigma Micron archival ink pen I'm just going to sign it there and that's it I'm not going to do any more